Hi there, this is Autumn with Supports for Special Students and today I wanted to share with you the simple way that I use Google Forms to track behavior within my classroom. Now if you've never used Google Forms before, it's basically just an online survey that you can access anywhere where you have access to a web browser. So you can use your phone, you can use a computer. I like to use an Amazon Fire tablet. I find that it's just a really convenient way to get the information that I need. Now, I wanted to make this really simple for you so that you could go back and replicate this in your classroom. So I made a template of the Google Forms. I did leave a link for the template in the description of this video, so go ahead and grab that now, and then I will get started with a screencast of exactly what we need to do to get it set up for your classroom. We'll walk through it step by step together. So when you download the file, this is what you'll see. This is the link to the Google Forms template. On page two, I just go through a little bit about why I do this, and there are links to my blog, which gives more information, um, and links to the tablet that I like to use in my classroom. And then on page three, that's where you'll find the link to the actual behavior template. Um, you can also continue on, and I have screenshots and directions for everything that we're going to talk about today, except for one additional time-saving tip, which we'll go through a little later in the video. But I'm going to go back to page three to download the template. And this is a Google Form, so it's not going to download to your hard drive. So you want to make a copy, and that copy will download to your Google Drive. Okay, so here's the template. You can change the name if you want to say um, Classroom Behavior 2018 2019. You might want to put um, your name on there or whatever period it might be. And now you can go through and you can put your students in there. And add a couple students. You just click on it to edit. Really easy. And then you can also edit the um, wording for kind of that, that rubric. So did they meet expectations? Was there an incident? Two or more incidents? Was a student absent? Um, those are all of your options to choose from when you're tracking the behavior. But you can definitely tweak that wording. I include up here just some directions because sometimes it is a paraeducator that's filling it out and I want to make sure that we're all on the same page and we're getting all of the information that we need. So I like to make sure that if a student did not meet expectations, that we're giving just a quick little blurb about what happened or why. I also like to note if there is um, so maybe something that would have changed in the environment that could have affected behavior. So if there was a sub or if there was a fire drill that day, I want to document that information. So once you have that, and that would be down here in the notes, once you have your form set up how you'd like it, all you do is hit this preview button here, and that's your form. It's as simple as that. However, I am going to show you a fun tip that's going to save you even more time. Because um, as you can see, if I click down, it doesn't take long, but it is a little time consuming to mark for everyone that they met expectations. Um, or maybe we had a student who had an incident, or another student who's absent. Um, we can document that on there. And if there was an incident, we could say, um, didn't line up after recess. Whatever that incident may be, and this is for a student four. So I'll make sure to include their initials. And submit. So you just submitted the form. It's that easy. We can go back to submit another form in order to get to the editing section. And now it's time for my time saving tip. So here's what I like to do because I feel like that takes a bit too much time. So I want to set a default. I want to make sure that everyone shows up automatically as met expectations. So I'm going to go up to these three dots, go to get prefilled link, and now I can set a default. I'm going to say, by default, everyone is meeting expectations. That way, I only have to click another option, 
if something happened during the day or if they were absent. I'm going to go down and get link and copy link. And once I have that link copied, I can open up a new tab and paste that link in there. And this is the actual form that you would be filling out each day. So as you can see, it's set up so by default everyone has met expectations and you only have to change it if something happened during the day. And so Alex, I... Let's do AI, since we're looking for initials. Um, maybe he didn't line up a recess either. Maybe this is a trend. Okay. And submit. That's it. It just takes a few seconds to submit your responses every day. And that link that we copied and pasted into um, a new browser window, that's the link that you will use to access this form daily. So you're either going to bookmark that link onto your browser or you're going to save it to um, your tablet or your phone. I like to actually email that link to myself and then I can open up my email on our classroom tablet and access the link that way. So now that we've gone through how to set up your form and input the information and submit it, I wanted to show you how to check your responses. So you can see up here, this is the questions area. That's where you have the information for your form. And then responses. So if we click here, it typically defaults to this little bar graph. And as you can see, um, like we had two days for student four, one where he met expectations and one where he was absent. Um, and there's a little key up above. You also have the option of looking at the individual forms that were submitted. So this is the form that was submitted. You can see it exactly as you put it in with the notes and everything. And there is the timestamp you can see down here at the bottom. You can scroll through and look at different days. And then my favorite way to look at the information is to actually view um, like a spreadsheet. So as you can see, you can take a look at the timestamp over here. You can look at the information based on students. So you can look at, let's say, um, student four here was absent one day, met expectations. Um, you can look at it per day. You can look all the way across. And if we keep scrolling, you can see where we have the notes section. So notes are at the end. So if we want to know what happened on that day, why the student didn't meet expectations, it's going to be down here at the end. The other thing that you can do, I don't know if you're anything like me, but oftentimes I get so busy at the end of the day that I don't have time to do everything that I want to do. So if I forget to input one day, um, I can go back the next morning and just change the date on the timestamp after I submit it. Um, that way I still have the information on my form um, and within my spreadsheet, but I don't have to do it that exact day. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Just leave your questions in the comments. And I will be doing some more videos to provide information about how I streamline data collection in my classroom, and I would love for you to watch. Go ahead and click subscribe if you're interested in seeing those videos as I post them.